an attempt to allay investor concerns. The minister promised to deal decisively with challenges facing the industry, from violent labor strikes to ensuring regulatory certainty. He insists that South Africa's constitution provides the necessary protection for any investor in the country. Anyone feeling short-changed or aggrieved is free to approach our courts, including the constitutional court. I think this provides the biggest policy security for any investor. I cannot give you any better clarity on this policy issue. Because our policies are justiciable. I trust that it is as clear as the blue skies of South Africa. Electricity shortages and policy changes have so far dominated concerns from mostly foreign investors at the mining in Daba. Well, the most important thing is the energy discussion. That is big. The energy discussion, we need to ensure that we, 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 so, we get our house in order when it comes to energy, specifically with ESCOM, and we need to help ESCOM. The second one is the MPRDA bill. Well, the amendment bill being recalled by President Zuma, a lot of people are asking questions, what next? Government is also looking to boost black participation in the mining industry. It's earmarked mines on sale at Anglo-American and BHP Billiton to create a giant mining company driven mostly by black people in the private sector. I'm envisaging us building another Anglo-American type size organization here, which gives us the real possibilities of getting black, black people to have their teeth on the economy. There's an overwhelming presence of African mining and trade ministers as well as investors from the United Kingdom and Australia here, a sign of the intense competition for capital in the global mining sector. Observers say business, government and labor need to speak in one voice to convince the outside world that South Africa deserves a large chunk of the money that's out there searching for a home. Liu Jamotukhelo, SABC News, Cape Town.